person or members who are doing our alternate sort of person or witness to the staff and the witness stand in a cross examination. your memory? It does. So there's only four vendors, right? Correct. And two of them were capitalized and two of them weren't? Yes. Now you reviewed the bank records uh, involving uh, Union Bank for Earth Inspired Product, correct? I looked at the checks, sir. And some of the checks were produced by a QuickBooks account where they're all typed in? Yes. And then some were handwritten in a hand checkbook. Yes, sir. And they were from a totally different kind of number sequence. Yes. I'll show you what's been marked. Let's grab exhibit 420E and 420B. I'll show you these two. Are these some of the union bank checks that you reviewed? Yes, sir, I've seen these. So the one in your left hand, which is which exhibit? 420E. And then the one in the right hand is 420E. Yes, sir. The handwritten checks are from a 1000 number series? That's right. And the typed out one are from a 4200 number series? Yes, sir. Account number is the same between the two, though? Come from the same bank account? They do look like they're the same bank account, sir. Okay. detailing all kind of your testimony here, correct? Yes. Like a 16-page report breaking down all the transactions and activity that you noticed that you covered with exhibits. From February 1st on, yes. Yeah. yes. And you said February 1st was the first date of any checks being written in the custom account. That's correct. And now you reviewed the custom account said the only administrator was Joseph McStay. Yes. Not Dan Kaplan. That's right. And the same thing for the main account, correct? Objection, vague as to main account. <laughs> the, we'll call it the contact account, the first account. Yes, sir. And Joseph was also the only administrator? Yes. Dan Kavanaugh had no administrative rights on that account? He was not listed as an administrator, no. Now, you went through the activity log and all the actions that you saw in the activity log for the custom account, which was Exhibit 423. Do you remember that part of your testimony? Yes. And then we went through individual exhibits of different audit histories for 
individual checks that you went through with the individual exhibits. Remember that part? Yes. Sir. And not all of the information that you received from the audit history was in the activity log, correct? I don't recall. I'm sorry. Here, I'll show you exhibit 423, which is the activity log for the custom. And you can take it out and keep it up here for reference if need be. When you were looking, there was a lot of checks that were changed and edited on February 5th, correct? I think you went over four or five of them on uh, direct testimony. Yes, there was checks on the 5th. And on the 5th in the audit, it talks about it. Maybe a check added, maybe one check listed as edited, but it didn't have all the detail that you found in the audit history, correct? No, uh, I explained earlier, there's, when it says a check, there's a hyperlink, and I had to click on the actual check. So that's, that's the audit history. I think that's what you're asking, I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying on the activity log, it doesn't list all the details that you find in the audit history. That's correct. So it's more of a bridge version of general steps taken, and then you found specific actions inside the audit history. I did, yes. But the times are still, when a check was added and when a check was deleted, the end items are still on the activity log, correct? Right? Yes. So if you want to see just the beginning and end of a check that you dealt with, you can look at activity log for that answer. Yes, you should know find that, yes. But all the details are on these other activities. Yeah, you have to click the link to follow to get the actual check detail. Now, you wrote this report about all these checks, and you were highlighting the activity you saw in QuickBooks. Were you doing that because you thought it was suspicious? Yes, sir. And part of the suspicious nature of it was activity that was happening after someone last heard from Justin Stead. That was part of it. That kind of was a red flag. Yeah, there were, there were other things that there were no checks written from that account, so that was definitely suspicious. Right. So the time when it started and the fact that activity continued, you're like, I should probably take a good look at this. Is that fair to say? Yes. So let's go through the in order. Start with January first, excuse me, February first. There was two checks that you checked on the audit history on that date, correct? Yes, I believe so. And the time of those audit history for the two checks looking at exhibit 426 and 425 they started around 1234 on 425 that ended at 1252 does that sound about right? yes sir and then also checked or excuse me exhibit 426 started at 1237 and ended at 1247 correct Split screen is exhibit 423 on the right, which you have before you, and then exhibit 439 to my client, Mr. Mayor. That's not the exhibit, and this is beyond the scope. The fact that objections overruled at this point. I, I don't know what exhibit this is, though, Your Honor. I don't have this exhibit. This is the uh, digital copy of the printed out exhibit that was presented. Wait, which is what number? 439A. Can I see the exhibit, please? Uh, I asked where it was. The big old stack of printed out. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson, can we just continue to display until this is resolved? Thank you. Apparently no one else has that. 
794. Who testified as the phone records to the phone belonging to my client, Mr. Chase Merrick. I'm not going to make you, I'm going to tell you where to look. <laughs> On the left side of that exhibit, you see the calls are ranked by number, right? So it goes sequential on the left side. I have a number, sir. And it goes from one all the way to 9,600 and change. A lot of calls. Yes, sir. Okay. When I refer to a call, I'll be referring to that number. Okay. Thank you. So, on February 1st, when the checks were dealt with between 1234 to 1252, can you go to call? 8860. Let me ask you this. You're familiar with my client's cell phone number as ending in 0102? I don't recall off the top of my head, I'm sorry. On the front page, is that the phone number? 0102, yes, sir. And then Mr. McStay's phone number ends in 7451? I don't recall. No, I mean. Exhibit. 442. And I'm showing you exhibit 442 on the overhead. This is page one of the 475 page document identifies the phone records for Joseph McStay. See the top number? Yes, sir. It ends in 7451, correct? That's correct. So Going back and Jackson can you turn that off on my notes. On exhibit 794, which is before you, I call 886. I'm sorry. 8866, excuse me. All the way near the back. phone call that was from the phone belonging to Joseph McStay to the phone belonging to Charles Merritt that lasted for 9 minutes and 56 seconds. 866 shows 7 minutes and 44 seconds. I'm sorry. Okay. Alright, so it's one less. 8865. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, 9 minutes and 56 seconds. Uh, originating number uh, looks like it's Joseph McStay. Terminating uh, is the defendant. And so, after the last adjustment on the checks at 12:52, within 11 minutes, Joseph calls my client. Joseph's phone calls my client. That's what the record shows. Okay. <coughs> In February 2nd. You've talked about uh, checks that were written with exhibits 427 and 428. There was two on those dates, correct? I'm sorry, can I look at my log again? Sure, Thank does you. that help refresh your memory? Please, um, what date? I'm sorry. February 2nd. Yes, there's two checks added. One, both, one at 11.27 a.m.? Yes, sir. And then one at 11.29 a.m.? Yes, sir. It appears to be both deleted at 11.27. Yes, sir. Okay, if you go back to exhibit 794. Yes. We'll look at calls 8921. We'll start there. I'm sorry, 8921? Maybe 8920. Um, 8921 and 8920 are the same phone numbers. Um, and it looks like your client's number to Joseph McSay. 
It's actually going back to 8914, correct? At 10.47 a.m., there's a phone call from my client to 10.56 a.m. There's a phone call from my client to Joseph McStay. I'm sorry, what item number are you on? 8914. Your client to Joseph McSay. Um, yes. You made multiple calls in a row, correct? All for an insignificant amount of time, five seconds, no seconds, six seconds. Yes. And then the call that is at eleven forty six AM, which I think is eight nine two four. Yes, sir. There's a call from my client to Joseph that lasted three minutes and 24 seconds. That's right. There appears to be a call back also, or excuse me, strike. And that seems to be what, uh, nine, nine minutes after the last check was adjusted on that day. That's not all right. And then again at 12.04 that same day, from calls down, my client called Joseph again. There's another phone call for over 13 minutes. May I ask what call you're referring to? Yeah, that would be call 8928. <coughs> 8928 is the defendant calling Joseph and for over 13 minutes. Right after all the checks are adjusted and deleted and everything, correct? I would have to look at the time, I'm sorry. If you could let me look at that for a second. The checks were created before the phone call. Right before, like a couple minutes before, right? The last one, but the first call was nine minutes after, correct? I'm sorry, which line are you talking about? Refer to a specific line number, please, so I know what you're talking about. Okay. 8924, again, the three minute, 24 second was. And that phone call happened at 1146. Yes. Yeah, so about 15 minutes. Nine minutes, 1137 is when the key. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the same. Uh, that was the deleted check at 1137. Nine minutes. Yes, sir. The next day you talked about was February 4th, that a, a check was February 4th, which is Exhibit 429, so the check was added on February 4th at 7.59 and deleted at 8.05? Correct. And then, if we can go back to my computer to Exhibit uh, 442, phone records of Mr. McStay. Night call down. At 8.28 p.m., is Joseph's phone ringing to my client's phone? Correct? It doesn't say incoming or outcoming, I'm sorry. I, I haven't seen this one before. Oh, incoming would have incoming written. Objection, foundation. Yeah, let's go. Oh, we will be an answer if you know. I'm sorry, can you ask the question again? These are the phone records identified uh, previously by previous witness describing incoming calls and this by incoming, and these are the numbers called. And there was an, a phone call on February 4th, 2010 from Joseph McStay's phone at 8.28 p.m. to the phone belonging to my client. Objection, foundation. Or we can answer if that's his understanding of what the record shows. I'm, 
I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confused. I don't, are, do you want me to look at this record or the, your client's records? This record. My client's record, not looking at that, I'm looking at this exhibit, 442. Okay, I'm sorry, I was confused. Okay. Yes, on this record it shows at 828, a phone call. It was made from Joseph McStay's phone to my client's phone. That simply says Pomona, California. Um, two, two columns over. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, to your client's phone at 828, yes. And that was, again, 23 minutes after the deletion of the check from the fourth in Exhibit 429. No, the check was deleted. I'm sorry. Uh, did you say before? I'm sorry. I got confused on the time. Can you repeat that question? And that is 23 minutes after the check was deleted based on Exhibit 429. I apologize. Yes. yes. Okay, Derek, we can go back off the questions. Now we'll go back to Exhibit 794. Now, the next date is February 5th, correct? There were multiple checks. There's a, the bulk of the testimony, correct? So we have exhibits 430, 431, 432, and 433. 434 discussed? Yes, sir. As well as exhibits 420D, E, F, H, and I, which are just the, the actual check. I believe, yeah. Those are the ones we talked about. And the time between when the audit history first shows a check being added to the time they end is what time? On the 5th, the first check um, appears to be added at 12.06 p.m. And the last one deleted at 12.39 p.m. And then they sign it at 12.40, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so the next day is There 
was one check added and deleted on me. And it was added at 2.20 in the afternoon? Yes, sir. And then edited, modified, everything done to it, and then deleted at 2.25, correct? Correct. We look at uh, call 9150. Call at uh, 1.55 p.m. on 2.8. 9150. 9150. 2.8.10 at 1.55 p.m. Yes, sir. And there is a call from my client's phone to Joseph McStay's phone the last 1 minute and 12 seconds. Correct. And that would be 25 minutes before that check is first added. I'm sorry, what was the item number again? I lost it. Uh, 435, item number 9150. So that was 1.55 p.m. And the deleted check was at 2.25 p.m. But it started at 2.20? Yes, sir. So 25 minutes before that activity happened? Yes. And that is the same day that the calls were made to QuickBooks, correct, at a little after 3 o'clock? Yes. So there, according to the phone records, there was a call from my client's phone to Joseph McStay. Appears to be checks added, deleted, and then calls made to QuickBooks. Correct. Right. And then after that, one hour and 47 minute phone call again on item 9163 501. There's a phone call from my client's phone to Joseph McStay's phone again, correct? Yes. So all these phone calls that preceded or were after all the check edits and everything that was done in QuickBooks, did you note all of that in your report? I didn't. Did you even notice it? Objection argumentative. Did you examine the phone records to see if there was any call between Mr. Merritt and Mr. McStay around the time of this QuickBook activity? I did not analyze the phone record. Seem a little less suspicious now with the communication. Objection, argumentative. Sustained the calls for speculation and conclusions. Now, this isn't the only thing you did for this investigation, right? You did other stuff. Sure, yes. You contacted Chick fil A. Um, you did other things that you testified to on the rest, correct? Yes, sir. Now, we also had an earlier testimony of uh, MacGyver McCarver who testified earlier in this trial. You, you interviewed him, correct? Yes. And Mr. MacGyver trial testified that he was at the house on January 31st and February 2nd. He told you that same information? I don't recall. I have to refer to my report. Are you referring to that report? Fresh your memory? Yes, sir. Do you have a copy of that? Uh, not with me, I don't. report that you did. Is that your report? Yes. Now my question was, when you spoke to Mr. Uh, I call him MacGyver, um, he told you he had been at the house on January 31st and February 2nd. Did your viewers report, see if that refreshes your memory about that part of the conversation? 
And by the house, I'm assuming you're referring to the Fallbrook residents of the United States? Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. That was my recollection. Recollection, I'm sorry. And the first time he went over, he said he painted all day at the Fallbrook house on January 31st, 2010. I don't know if this is the first time he's ever been there, but he did. Of our bar, excuse me, that's what he testified to at trial. Did he tell you that part during your conversation? I don't remember that. And then also, uh, Talk to Joseph extensively just how things are going, catching up with him because he hasn't seen him since Christmas. Objection relevance. Sustained. Well, he also, MacGyver told you that the conversation he had with Mr. McStay was that he finally bought out and got rid of Dan Kava. Objection, right? hearsay, yep. relevance. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, um, is there a page number? <clears throat> Do you remember that part of the conversation? I don't recall. If you testify to that, does that sound, that doesn't sound familiar? I don't remember. So, around the time Mr. MacGyver is talking to Mr. McStay and saying, I finally got rid of Dan Kavanaugh, it's the same time started writing checks every customer account, right? Objection. That misstates the testimony as argumentative, the way phrased. When MacGyver spoke with Joseph on January 31st and February 2nd, he talked about finally buying out Dan Kavanaugh. You said on January, February 1st, the day between those two days, is the first time we saw check activity in the custom website, correct? Correct. So, buying out and being done with Kavanaugh is kind of a relatively, I guess you could say, uh, important date when you change your practice and you start writing on a different account. Objection calls for speculation. Okay. Part of your investigation, or are you aware that Dan Kavanaugh was bought? Objection beyond the scope, foundation, speculation, and hearsay. Sustained as beyond the scope of this <laughs> When you reviewed your QuickBook records in the cloud, did it give you the IP addresses to tell you from which computer the online QuickBook activity occurred on? No, it didn't. Did you request that information from QuickBook? I did not. So you, based on the records you see, can only say that the login for Joseph McStay was what was used to access the account. Yeah, that's correct. I don't know login. So that person would need to have the login code and the password. Correct. And you received a similar type thing when you got your login. Yes. Now you reviewed all the uh, discovery about the QuickBooks and these checks and everything that was part of the investigation done by San Diego as well in preparation for this part of the investigation? Yes, briefly. And were you involved in a briefing with San Diego when they talked about the investigation bringing on the case yet? I was not. Did you review the statement that was played in court between my client, Mr. Dugall, where he admits to doing or being involved in these checks with the custom site. Objection, the state's testimony and yeah, the evidence. Oh, 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 we can answer and explain. What, what if anything, you heard 
or was aware of with regard to that compensation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, your client said that he received checks on the 4th. Uh, that was why the meeting had Chick-fil-A happen. And just so you know, that was played. The whole interview was played uh, for the jury. And he talked about, yes, we were involved with writing the checks, and he gave me the checks. He was very open about it during that conversation, correct? He said he... an argumentative and speculation. Yeah. And also called for speculation. Did you know that my client discussed all these transactions with Mr. Dugall at the time you started your analysis of QuickBooks account. Objection mistakes the evidence and assumes facts on those and foundation. This is true, in fact, not Were you aware that my client told Detective Dugall of his involvement in the beginning of February with the custom QuickBooks account? Yes. Were you aware of that at the time you started your analysis of the QuickBooks account for the custom and contact account? Yes, that's why I was suspicious because he stated he received those checks on the form. You were suspicious because he was open about being involved in those transactions. Objection assumes facts on evidence that he was supposed to be. as a cause for speculation and conclusion. Objection argumentative. Sustained syndromes. Anything on redirect? Yes. Do you still have those film records? I do, yes. I have a book too if you want to that. did not review or you weren't responsible for compiling any of the cell phone data, is that right? No, I, did, I didn't analyze any of the cell phone data. Okay. And you went through a series of dates and times with respect to the QuickBook records and with respect to uh, phone calls that were made, is that correct? Yes. 
And did you have any knowledge that um, the defendant and Joseph McStay would call each other multiple times a day? Yes. Okay. And you were specifically asked about February 4th. Do you recall that? Yes. And there was a particular phone call that was made um, from Joseph McStay's phone at 8.28 p.m. Do you recall that? Uh -huh. Yes. show you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 441. And this is what counsel had shown you on the overhead before with that particular phone call. Do you see it reflected there from Mr. McStay's phone to the defendant's phone number? Yes. Okay. Could you actually highlight that for me, please? And that was at 8.20? Yes. Yes. That occurred like 20 minutes after the last QuickBooks activity, is that right? Correct. And if I can show you... and showing you what's been marked as 439C, which is a portion of Mr. McStay's records. Do you see that? Yeah, yes. Okay, and the 0102 is the defendant's phone number, correct? I'm sorry, you said Mr. McStay's records, so this is Mr. Rexner's records? Yes. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. And then when you take the highlighter and you look at the calls on the 4th, do you see that? Yes. And uh, Mr. McStay's number is the 949 number, correct? Were you familiar with that on the records that you looked at? Yes, the area code was 949. Okay, and on the 4th, do you see a series of phone calls between them? This is looking at Mr. Merritt's phone records? Correct. Okay. This is exhibit 439C. And you're asking specifically about, about the 4th? The, yes. February 4th, we see the 949 number right here that ends in 7451. Yes. That was Joseph McStay's cell phone number. Correct. And then this particular phone number over here, or I'm sorry, these are the records for the defendant's phone, right? Yes. And you see the phone calls that occurred between them on the 4th, February 4th of 2010. Yeah, there are a few phone calls um, that start, uh, between 5.48 p.m and there were previous phone calls. Okay, could you highlight those? Or highlight just the last call that you see would be fine. The last call on the fourth? The last call on the fourth. And you indicated what time uh, the last call on the fourth was? 5.48 p.m. 
And we just looked at um, Mr. McStay's records. Do you recall that? Yes. And the timing of that was different. Is that right? That's right. The last call from Mr. McStay that was made to the defendant's phone number was 828. Is that correct? Yes. And that's not reflected on Mr. Uh, on the defendant's phone logs, is that? It's not on After that 548 call that we saw on the defendant's cell phone records, is there additional activity after that on the 4th? Yes. And what's the phone number where we have that additional activity to? Same one. Uh, there's a, the originating number is 909-226-1197. And are those calls answered? No, the description um, say mobile to mobile voicemail. And how long or how many calls do you see that goes straight to voicemail box on these records from that number? There's six phone calls. And what are the times on those calls? Six or nine p.m. Your objective is to relevance any of this or is it from? Uh, these are you're reading from. The exhibit 439C, Mr. Merritt's phone number, correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And the uh, calls that went to voicemail are to what number? The telephone number of, can you read that phone number that they were? Yes, it goes to the voicemail phone number of 909-213-2103. That's not Mr. McSaid. No. Those are both voicemail. That's a voicemail phone number. Okay. Are there calls made both, or, or are there actions, or activity on this particular record that you were viewing on the defendant's cell phone um, prior to 8:28 p.m.? Yes. And is there activity on the defendant's cell phone after 8.28 p.m.? Other, other telephone activity other than Mr. McStay? Correct. To be clear, there's no call reflected on the defendant's cell phone records of that 828 call. Is that correct? That's correct. And in terms of, of the checks that we reviewed on QuickBooks, a number of those checks were actually cashed. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And prior to that date of February 1st, there had been no other checks written out of the custom account, correct? Nothing further. show you 439C and 441 on the overhead. Okay. Your vacancy. First, 439C, that is the call you highlighted, correct, on the left-hand side? Oh, let's make it so we can see it. And we'll zoom out slightly. That's the one call you, you highlighted, correct? Yes, sir. And it appears to be right above it, 
there's a call from the same number, Joseph McStay's, to Charles Merrick, correct? One minute prior? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you exhibit 441, which is the records of Joseph McStay's call, and that 1547 is 547 in the evening, correct? Or 1747, excuse me. Yes, yeah, 1747 is 547. So we have only one call going out from McStay's phone record, correct? At that time. I'm sorry, this is Joseph McStay's phone records? These are Joseph McStay's phone records that you highlighted showing the call that happened at 8.28 p.m. Yes, sir, it looks like one phone call. Two, active, two be above that, two lines above that is the call at 1747, correct? That's correct. There's only one phone call on that record. Yes, sir. But on the next one, above the highlight, it shows that there was two received in his record. You're now going back to Back to Merit Records, records on, which is 439C. And there is a connected phone call and there's one that's not connected. So his records show two incoming calls, but the Mr. Call Merritt, Mr. Merritt's records show two incoming calls, correct? One connected call and one non-connected call, okay. yes. And Mr. McStay's only shows one? Yes, sir. Can you explain it? I can. I'm not a cell phone expert. Calls don't go through, they don't make somebody's phone records, I guess? Objection argumentative. But the objection to saying sustained as soon as facts, not evidence. Call for speculation and conclusion. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay, uh, you may step down. You're still subject to recall. And uh, counsel approach for a moment. Yeah. Okay. We're scheduling uh, with the uh, attorney, so this is the last witness for today. So unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little bit earlier. All right. Give uh, you a little extra time to get home in the rain. Uh, we're not in session tomorrow. Monday, again, is a holiday, so we're not going to be in session on Monday. So we will be back on Tuesday morning at 9.30. Again, keep in mind we had admissions previously given to you, not to form or express any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case or allow anyone to discuss the case with you or in your presence. And again, that means not to discuss anything about the case, any of the witnesses, testimony, exhibits, parties, or attorneys, and we'll see everyone back Tuesday morning at 9.30.